Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Elshad Hassanov, Medical Oncology Fellow at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Uh, I'm here today with Dr. Eric Yonash, Professor of uh, Medical Oncology. Uh, he's in our uh, genital urinary department. Uh, I'm going to discuss a few ASCO abstracts with him. Um, hi, Dr. Yonash. Hi, good to be here. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, so I want to ask you uh, questions about first uh, about your VHL study. Uh, could you please tell us that uh, phase two study you did uh, with anti-HIF2 uh, inhibitor on the VHL uh, patients? Yeah, so this was a study testing a HIF2 alpha inhibitor, MK6482, in individuals who have hereditary von Hippel-Lindau disease. About 10,000 people have this uh, disease in the United States, and they have multiple lesions, including uh, retinal, cerebellar, and spinal hemangioblastomas, uh, renal cell carcinomas, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, and pheochromocytomas. The primary endpoint of the study was to test response in renal cell carcinomas in these individuals. And uh, um, this study uh, enrolled 61 people. So uh, uh, we ended up seeing a response rate uh, confirmed of about 28%. And an additional 13% of individuals had um, a, an unconfirmed response, but we expect those to, to actually be uh, confirmed later on. Okay, that's excellent. And uh, could you please tell more, us, uh, us more about the uh, compound itself? Like uh, what's the mechanism of action, how it's designed, and uh, why it did take so long for us to generate a compound that is able to target uh, HIF2? Yeah, it's a great question. So uh, HIF2 is a transcription factor, and uh, transcription factors tend to be very small, tightly um, coiled molecules where it's, it's fairly hard to find drugs that can actually get uh, into the crevices and cracks, if you will, of the protein in a way to actually bind to them and potentially inhibit them. So this was an, an, a, an, a challenge, an engineering challenge, if you will, that was finally overcome. Uh, and, and this compound uh, really is now a second or third generation development of, of the original compound that was discovered. I see, and it's particularly against uh, HIF2 alpha, right? That's correct, yeah. It doesn't, it really does not inhibit HIF1 alpha to any degree. It'll inhibit HIF2 alpha. I see, okay, excellent. And uh, now a little bit about the design of the trial. So this was a single arm trial or a randomized trial. And uh, could you please tell us about that? Yeah, so this is actually a fairly small 61 patient single arm study. And uh, the reason it's so small is because this is a relatively rare patient population. And uh, going into a randomized design uh, early on really what didn't, didn't seem practical or feasible. And the other thing was that if we were to actually see very strong results with this particular trial, that may actually be sufficient in this orphan disease uh, for, for registrational purposes. I see. And uh, also, I noticed that uh, the trial was initially designed to show the efficacy of this compound in the uh, kidney tumors. However, in your presentation, I saw that you show the figures that it's also able to have activity on the hemangioblastoma in uh, CNS. Um, and now, do you think that uh, in the future, this compound uh, could be also used like in general for VHL uh, other lesions, or do you expect to, are you planning to uh, generate more trials and study in other disease population? Yeah, so to be able to come up with a fairly tight study design, the primary endpoint, as you, as you pointed out, Alshad, was response in VHL-related renal cell carcinomas. But that wouldn't mean that we wouldn't be looking for benefit in other organ sites. And the majority of these individuals had hemangioblastomas as well. And, and we have seen, as you can see from the presentation, there are preliminary data suggesting that there are potentially robust responses occurring there as well. So the hope would be that these data would be strong enough to get a broad indication for VHL disease. We'll have to see whether that's the case or not. But in any case, we will have to move forward to, to generate additional data 
where we're going to be enriching the populations who have hemangioblastomas, who have theochromocytomas, and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. I see. Thank you. And uh, also, could you please compare uh, this uh, study results to other agents that were previously available for treating the v uh, VHO uh, patients, sunitinib or pazopanib, uh, in regards to the efficacy or uh, toxicity profiles? Yes, yeah, so we published two additional prospective studies in the past 10 years, one with sunitinib in this patient population and another then with pazopanib. And in both cases, we saw some, some decent response rates in, in the kidney. So with the pazopinib study, it was an over 50% 50, 50 objective response rate in the renal lesions. But we saw very modest results in the central nervous system. So the hemangioblastomas, we had a 4% objective response rate. And in addition, this drug, pazopinib, is, is much less well tolerated than, than MK6482. So from a quality of life perspective, Although we did see some benefit with pizopinib, it wouldn't really be a, a perfect long-term solution for individuals who have this hereditary disease. What's the success uh, of this study besides um, uh, the results of the study that you're able to see? Yeah, so one, one of the things that was really impressive was this was a very nicely coordinated effort between the VHL Family Alliance, uh, the VHL patient community, as well as investigators uh, in clinical care centers in the United States around the world. Uh, we managed to, from, from trial opening to closing was less than a year, uh, and there were over 10 centers that, that were involved in this. And uh, it was impressive how, how quickly we were able to recruit patients. And it just really, I think, is a testament, A, to the organizational um, capacity um, of these various groups, but but also the fact that this was uh, such an unmet need that that patients were very very enthusiastic to participate. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully, we will soon have this compound available for all VHL patients worldwide. Uh, congratulations on this uh, great study. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.